Welcome down to Frederica Golf Club. We're here with Tony. down to Frederica Golf Club. We're here with Tony and Mac over there. Today we're hanging out. We're uh, gonna do some coaching in the morning, playing this afternoon. Tony, this is gonna be a good weekend. Absolutely, it's fun to be able to bring a small group of people, small group of young folks. I mean, a couple college players, we've got a couple juniors, and then we've got a young guy that's starting out embarking on play and trying to play professional golf. And so the opportunity not only because Frederica is such an awesome spot, but to be able to spend time with Mac, who um, everybody knows what I think of Mac, but he's it just so has such unique insight into performance and how to make people perform better, which is ultimately what Jackson and myself and all these people are here for. If you want to get better and you want to be a good player, you need to have some sort of a routine that gets you warm and gets you loose and breaks a sweat, to be honest, before you hit the range to go ahead and hit a few shots before you play your round. We're trying to get that dot to move in towards his heel so he gets more wound behind it and he's getting 70 something percent pressure behind it. And he's getting more over to his left sooner. Uh -huh. So the problem coming in for him? Well, so this is just building more on what we'd already done, which I think is important in instruction to have a plan and a program that you're building on. And so building really on what we did last time, uh, I had Scott Lynn down to the dome and, and we worked on, obviously William's a smaller guy. We're trying to find ways to maximize his golf swing, maximize speed. And, you know, we found that, uh, we've known that William's a, a rear post guy. So finding ways to maximize, get him more, get him deeper and turn more into his right side. And so we just checked on that. He's nailing the backswing. And then more of what we did, <coughs> excuse me, last time, which was trying to help him learn to really push against the ground with his left foot to drive his hip and his shoulder out of the way and to use some vertical forces. And really the, the big thing today was helping him learn to do more of it and time it correctly so that he got more out of the, more out of his shot. And then, you know, this will sound simple, but one of the big things we did was we Jackson fixed his setup and got him squared up so that he could hit the shot, the shape of shot that he's trying to do. Any better? I think you get on the outside of your left, you get your left into your left toes and then you get to the outside of the foot and you don't have any leverage to push and to drive your hip and your chest out of the way. And then you don't have, that doesn't have give you enough room for the club to swing more left, which is what you have to do to hit cut. As he's coming into the ball now, from the top of his back swing, as he's coming into the ball. Much more of his left foot you're seeing present as he comes down into impact, where previously all the pressure was on the outside part of that foot, if right. any. Dolphin and so Tony and I both left. like having are. some ground Ready? pressure so that we can drive and use our pivot through the ball and sustain a stable club face.
play in the white tee game, which uh, the white tees here at the uh, at Frederica are the furthest up tees, or I think second from furthest up. I use it for multiple reasons, and I think it can help a lot of folks. And one is how many people always come and say, man, if I just drove it way further, you know, and had a wedge in my hand, I'd score a lot better. And I think what some of these kids are finding that is that one, their wedge game isn't as good as they think it is, and that if they were way up by the green, they wouldn't necessarily shoot lower scores. So I think they're learning that they need to get better with their wedge games. And then I also think that from a core strategy standpoint, it makes them have to think. It gets you conditioned to the opportunity to make a lot of birdies. And I think it helps, it can help guys with like Dawson drove the first green, right? So he gets two under, uh, you know, through two holes. Like it gets people more comfortable and used to getting more birdies and getting under par. And I think that helping them break that threshold sometimes for some of these young players and getting used to being two, three, four, five under par is a big deal. Almost all these guys, I mean, for the most part, their golf swings are good enough to shoot way better than they are. And that's one of the reasons I brought Mac in here, you know, this weekend, is there's a lot of things that go into scoring and a lot of things that go into shooting low scores that don't have anything to do with their pivot, their swing, or any of that stuff. It's There's so many fine details, and most players, but especially young players, all want to just go grind it out on the range and beat a bunch of balls, and that's how they're going to get to shooting lower scores, and they overlook the details and the refined things that it takes to you know to be a better player. The uh, how's the game from the white tees? Game from the white tees should be easy, but I'm struggling. And you got kids that we play golf, and, you, and you're having a bad tournament round. It's, you know, you know, it's the last day. You're not going to win. And these guys go into learn mode. Like, all right, I got nine holes in tournament golf to use. So you try something to try to get out of this. And you you hear about a lot of guys going out and having the next week wins yeah. and doing really well. And and that's what you don't want to waste your time, right? But we just cause you everybody else just gets mad and out their way in. You get good players go, all right, well I got I got time to use to to work on something to see if I can get my feel back, right? Mm -hmm. They do it all the time. And, and good players, even like in what we're doing this afternoon, like I know from going down to work watch Lucas or Seth or any of those guys, like yeah. every time they're out there, even if they're drinking a beer, having fun, they're trying to learn something Absolutely. from what they do. Absolutely. So we have a new face here at one of Tony's camps. This is Mac uh, and he has brought some amazing insights over the last couple of days. Mac. Give us the, the quick bio. Okay, uh, for close to the last 30 years, I've been representing professional golfers, uh, Davis Love, Justin Leonard, um, some teachers, Butch Harmon. Um, got out of that business and I noticed there was kind of a missing link in golf instruction. It wasn't the intellectual or the mechanical swing planes. Uh, it was actually there are no coaches left in golf after they get out of college. And there's a lot of similarities between what pros that succeed and ones that don't succeed have. I've kind of noticed those for over many years and I'm trying to transfer that to these young guys as a coach and not really a swing instructor. And so we're trying to test out and see how well it works. Playing statistics, everyone, statistically, your scoring clubs, your wedges, 
you've got you've got a number with each of those wedges. If it's a 75 yard, 60 degree, or if it's a 100 yard, 55 degree, or a 115, 51 degree, everybody's got a number, and they know that number in their heart. And so when they play golf, they should try to get that number as many times a day as they can. And, avoid, and that, that way they are taking control of the golf course and the golf course is not dictating how they're gonna have to play. So if you get your number, if you can get your number eight times a day, then you would, that's eight really strong birdie chances. And that's plenty. And now you're in control of the golf course instead of it controlling you. Six and a 50? Uh, 50, 54, 60. All right, so one of your jobs, you okay. pro your perfectionist, is to find your number with each of those clubs. Each of them's got a, a number that is just your number, right? Like yeah, because I only told you one, I don't know the other two. Okay, so you work your rear end off to find those numbers. So when I say hit your number, there's three different numbers you can hit all day. Think about it, there's golf courses you can get your number at 12 times a day. 12 times, you right? So each of those, and statistically, your 60 and your 55 from the right number are probably equally efficient. So why would you risk going over water to get this? Easy drill. So grab all your wedges. So I've got margaritas. I've got 50, 54, 60, and I've also got my pitching wedge. So I'm going to grab one ball per club. Okay. So I got four balls. And what you're going to do, you're going to drop them from knee height now. But you're going to start with your lowest lofted club. So grab your pitching wedge, and you've got to go through full routine to the same pin with all four clubs. So we're gonna learn and it's gonna help you be creative. So now I've gotta hit a pitching wedge, right? And I'm gonna go through my full routine, make my practice stroke, got my landing spot. Now I'm just gonna hit a little chip, which is terrible. And then I go to my next club. So now I've got, I'm gonna go up to the 50. So rather than just dumping a bucket of balls and hitting a ton of shots, you're gonna hit four shots, grab those golf balls, Go to a different spot, do it again. You do it again, you do it again. In 30 minutes, you have hit 100 shots, and then you'll be able to tell us, okay, I'm bad with this club, I'm bad from these lives, I need work on these clubs, or I'm really good with this one. Any behind the scenes insights there? Any behind the scenes insights? Well, I think it's good too, this drill. It creates a lot of creativity as well. Like from here, that's why I asked them what would they normally do and nothing wrong with hitting a putter or using your putter. But then all of a sudden you've got to hit four different clubs rather than the one that you would always choose on the course and you create some creativity. It's almost like watching kids chip, right? When they're young, they're using any club they want. They're hitting tons of shots around the green. And that's kind of what we're doing. So then on the course, it breeds or brews that creativity, helps them kind of make their short game a little more versatile. So another aspect is that like you, you actually have to think, right? Right. And so this drill is something that you have to be in that problem solving mode, like we want during practice Absolutely. and not just in that hit, 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 that's hit right. mode. So, and I it. think good practice, right? There's a difference between the block practice and random practice that you hear us talk about. And random practice is hitting different shots, using different clubs to different targets. And so if we can maximize our time out here, learn different shots, hit different clubs, going through your routine, I think they'll get better quicker. What do you think, T? Agree. And I would tell you, and I would, what I'd like them to do after this is then take three golf balls 
and randomly scatter the three and have to get two out of three up up and down and do that three different times for nine holes and try to get six out of nine up and down. I mean, that's the gauntlet. That's what Lucas and I do and set up a bunch of us. So I think that that would be, uh, I think that you combine this so you've got the creativity and then you've got the stuff that they're going to actually have to do out on the golf course, right? right. And I mean, I love this because I think what you always find is I guarantee you a couple of these guys are gonna find a club that they would never have used for this shot that they're way better at That's right. with than the club that they use and then they've learned a different shot, mm -hmm. you know. So one of the things that we've done in working with Lucas on his short game is look, in order to help make the low point get in front of the ball, like I did with Chris, I preset him so there's more weight on his left. And Chris and I have done this drill, and with Lucas we did this drill down at Bears Club, where he rolls the right side of his foot off the ground and leaves the spikes off the ground. Right? If you leave the spikes off the ground, you're not gonna go this way, and the, and the low point's not gonna happen behind the ball, so it helps with contact. And look, you'll even see in tournament play, you'll, you know, in tournament play or on the golf course in particular, I'll see him or one of, you know, I'll see him possibly do some of that, you know, with a difficult shot, right? Because you're trying to make the contact out there. So there's nothing wrong with doing something like this. And you can't, you can't operate under, I feel like it looks weird, so I'm not going to do it if it's working, right? Your job is you want to play professional golf and get better. So if it helps you score better, shit, we'll use it. How good was this trip? I mean, Frederica Golf Club is unreal, phenomenal place. Uh, just some great wisdom here. So thank you so much. First of all, this is incredible. Tony, thanks for having me down as always. I, I can't thank you enough. It's always fun to hang out and do sweeper camp. And this one was awesome. Make sure to subscribe to the Tour Coach Podcast, which Tony, uh, he's interviewing people as he's out at tour tournaments and talking to players and coaches and stuff like that. Uh, we love producing that with him. Make sure to subscribe. So much good stuff coming there. Yeah.